values. So to motivate this discussion, we're going to look at a second order linear ODE with repeated roots, which corresponds to a critically damped mass spring system. And this is the ODE that we're gonna look at. The first thing that we're gonna do is convert this ODE into a system. So first, we're going to let Y prime equal V. So I'm thinking that if Y prime or Y is displacement, then Y prime is velocity, so I'm naming it V. Then if that's the case, Y double prime becomes V prime. So that means anywhere I see a Y double prime in this language, I will write that as V prime instead. But because of the form of the ordinary differential equation, if Y double prime is V prime, then V prime is all of this other stuff in the ODE, but now moved over to the right-hand side. So I'm going to then write V prime is equal to negative four Y prime minus four Y using the ODE itself, but we have another name for Y prime. Y prime is just V, so this is negative four V minus four Y. Once we've made that substitution, what we have is a first derivative in the V variable, a first derivative in the Y variable. And so what this corresponds to then is two differential equations, dy dt is equal to V and dv dt is equal to negative four Y minus four V. I can convert this into a matrix form by recognizing that on the left-hand side, I'm really taking the derivative with respect to time of the vector Y and V. And on the right-hand side, since these are linear combinations of the Y and V variables, I can write this right-hand side as a matrix multiplication onto the V vector or the Y V vector. Looking at this first equation right here, I look at this first equation and say, how much Y is in this equation? Well, I find zero Y on the right-hand side. And then how much V? I find one V on the right-hand side. Looking now at the second equation, it's right-hand side. I see that there is negative four Y and negative four V. So if this Y V vector is my capital Y vector, and if this Y V vector is my capital Y vector, then the outcome of this whole process is to have the derivative of Y vector with respect to time is equal to the matrix A times the derivative of Y, where the matrix A is equal to 0, 1, negative 4, negative 4. And then my initial condition, Y of 0, is equal to Y of 0 and Y prime of 0. That's V, right? And that's given to me above with the initial conditions for the ODE is 1, negative 1. So that is the second order ODE restated in terms of a first order linear system of ordinary differential equations, where instead of tracking just one scalar variable for displacement, we're tracking both the displacement Y and velocity V associated with this mass spring system. Before we solve this problem, let's note the solution to the original ODE. Well, if y is equal to e to the rt, then that means that the ODE y double prime plus 4y prime plus 4y is equal to e to the rt times r squared plus 4r plus 4. And if I set that equal to zero, I find out that r plus 2 quantity squared is equal to zero. So that means that my r is equal to negative 2, which is a repeated root, and so y of t is equal to c1 e to the negative 2t plus c2 t e to the negative 2t. Well, why would I do this? If we're going to write this system down, right, and the system is tracking both y and y prime at the same time, well, I can find y prime of t, which is equal to my v of t, and this is equal to negative 2 c1 e to the negative 2t plus c2, and let's remember, we need to use the product rule right here, and so using the product rule, we get e to the negative 2t um, plus, well, I've taken the derivative of t, now I need to take the derivative of the e, but leave the t alone, and so I get negative 2t e to the negative 2t. And so I'm going to ask us to remember that this came from the product rule. And ultimately, if I wanted to record this solution in the language of y of t, where y is the vector keeping both, I will have c1, 1, negative 2, e to the negative 2t, plus c2, then 1, negative 2, t, e to the negative 2t, plus 0, 1, e to the negative 2t, where this y, 1, negative 2 vector comes from the 1 that's in front of this e to the negative 2t in the y function, and this negative 2 that's in front of the e to the negative 2t in the v function. And then that structure, you'll notice, is repeated right here, where I have 1t e to the negative 2t, and then negative 2t e to the negative 2t. So that's where this is coming from, this eigenvector, really. And then the last one is that there is no c2 e to the negative 2t in the y equation, and there is 1 c2 e to the negative 2t in the v equation. So that, this second term here, multiplying c2, is the way that it is, is because of the use of the product rule. So now we're going to treat this problem using eigenvalues and eigenvectors. We're going to want to remember that we've found the solution through the corresponding scalar problem, and we've seen that something a little interesting happens because of the product rule, and now we want to take that um, to its conclusion, but through the language of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So we have our A matrix, and so we begin with our steps. For step one, we're going to set the determinant of A minus lambda I equal to zero, but that's the determinant of the A matrix, where I subtract lambda times I, right? So this right here is going to be the A matrix 0, 1, negative 4, negative 4, minus lambda times the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. And so that will always end up taking this lambda onto the main diagonal elements of the I matrix, nothing elsewhere. And so then when I conduct the subtraction, I will only ever affect the A matrix by subtracting lambda off the main diagonal. So I'm going to get the determinant of the matrix negative lambda, 1, negative 4, negative 4 minus lambda. And when I do upper left times lower right, I'm going to get negative lambda times negative 4 minus lambda minus a negative 4 times a 1, which should be equal to lambda squared plus 4 lambda plus 4. Not surprisingly, this is the same characteristic equation for um, the scalar problem. We can't get rid of that characteristic equation. So now we have lambda plus 2 quantity squared is 0. So our lambda is equal to negative 2, and that's a repeated root. So now for step 
2, I'm going to look at a minus lambda i, which we know, times, I'll call it the x vector, this will be my eigenvector. This is a little backwards from what we have in class, but let's remember that we've used um, the y variable and v variable as they would appear for mass spring systems, so we're going to use this x ve vector to represent our eigenvector. So if I put lambda, which is equal to negative 2, into my a minus lambda i matrix, I will get 2, 1, negative 4, and then negative 4 minus negative 2 would be negative 4 plus 2, so that is going to be um, a negative 2, times my x vector, which is x1, x2, is equal to my 0 vector. We can double check really quick over here, and we can notice that this has a determinant which is equal to zero. Right? Two times negative two is four, minus a negative four times one, so that's a negative four plus a four that gives me a determinant of zero. I can also see that the first row is just negative one half times the second row. Right? These are all indications to me that the matrix that I'm multiplying my eigenvector by, this a minus lambda i matrix, has zero determinant. Both rows are telling me the same thing, so I'll just look at the first row, and that'll be two times x1 plus x2 is zero, so x2 is equal to negative two x1. Since in two dimensions an eigenvector is just a direction, and I can say that x1 is equal to one, because then x2 is uniquely determined to be negative two, that gets me my first direction in space, and in this case my only direction in space, which is x1 in the first component, which is one, and then x2 in the second component, which is negative two, and so that defines my first eigenvector. And since this root's repeated, I really can't define a second eigenvector from this. So from the eigenvalue eigenvector calculation, what we really have found is that there is one solution to the problem, y1 of t, which is equal to 1, negative 2, my first eigenvector, e to the negative 2t, so that's e to the of my eigenvalue times t. And right now, this is my only solution. And we must find a second linearly independent solution to the ODE. For scalar problems, we know how to do this, but in the next section, what we'll talk about is how this gets changed for vector problems and how this was maybe foreseeable because of how the product rule affected that critically damped oscillator above. Okay, to find the second linearly independent solution to the matrix problem y prime is equal to matrix A times y, where eigenvalue lambda was repeated, we could maybe guess that y2 of t is equal to t times y1, so that would be t eigenvector, which I'll have be x here, e to the lambda t, so where x obeys a times x is equal to lambda times x. Well, if that's my guess, then I can calculate from this guess y2 prime, which is just going to be x e to the lambda t, where I take a derivative of the t, but leave the e alone. Now I take a derivative of the e, which gives me lambda t being left alone, x vector e to the lambda t. So that's the derivative of my guess. But then if I look at a times y2, so I'm trying to verify that the derivative of my guess is equal to a times my guess, well, I'm going to get a times t x e to the lambda t. But since t is a scalar, I can bring it out front of the A matrix, and then I have A times X, E to the lambda T, but A times X, well, that's A times X. If X is an eigenvector, which is defined to be, then this should be equal to T from before, and then the A times X gets replaced with a lambda times X and E to the lambda T. So the implication here is that Y2 prime, which is equal to X, E to the lambda T, plus lambda T, X, E to the lambda T, is equal to T, E to the, or, excuse me, T, lambda, X, E to the lambda T. And so... That is my right-hand side, which is my a times y2. And so if I'm checking to see if these things are really equal, what I have is, well, this lambda t x e to the lambda t term is on the right-hand side as well, so they would cancel. So the implication here is that x e to the lambda t is equal to 0. Well, e can never be 0, so this is telling me that the x vector has to be 0. But this contradicts our definition of eigenvector. So that means, in this case, our guess is not correct, and we must find a different guess. Well, thinking about what happened because of the product rule in our critically damped mass spring system, it turns out that there was a t multiplying an eigenvector. Okay, let me just grab that result. Okay, so I've grabbed that result from above and pasted it in here. Okay, let's erase maybe this bit and this bit, which are needed. So this part right here, this was my original guess for y2. This was our guess for y2, which was equal to t times my eigenvector times e to the lambda t. Right, and we found out that this was wrong. Why was it wrong? Well, it was wrong because there is this piece right here, which is unaccounted for. And so, why did that piece come about? That piece came about because of the product rule for the critically damped system that had the t e to the lambda t, and if I were keeping track of both position in the first row and velocity in the second row, well, then I get this non-trivial second component after the product rule happens. So, the implication here is that I'm going to guess for y2 of t, I'm going to guess t times my eigenvector e to the lambda t, but I'm going to add to that some little extra bit, which I'll say p vector, and then e to the lambda t as well. So this little extra bit is called a generalized eigenvector. And that generalized eigenvector is meant to account for this extra stuff, this extra bit of vector solution that came from the product rule as it's working on both the displacement function y and the velocity function v, which is what we're keeping track of in these vectors. So let's check out how this handles. Now if I look at a times y2, that's going to be t times a times x e to the lambda t plus a times p e to the lambda t. Or because a is an or x is an eigenvector of a, I have t times lambda x e to the lambda t plus a times p e to the lambda t. That's 
That's what A times Y2, which is my guess, turns out to be. So that's the right-hand side of the ODE. Now, I also have the left-hand side of the ODE, which is just the derivative of my guess. But taking the derivative of my guess, I take the derivative of t, I leave the x alone, so, or the e alone, so I get x e to the lambda t. But now I take the derivative of e to the lambda t to get lambda t x e to the lambda t. And now I take the derivative of the term that has my generalized eigenvector, so I get plus lambda p vector e to the lambda t. And now if I equate both sides, I get that x e to the lambda t plus lambda t x e to the lambda t plus lambda p e to the lambda t, which is my left-hand side of the ODE. must be equal to my right. So my right is given by um, t lambda x e to the lambda t plus a p e to the lambda t. That's my right. And so the consequence here is, well, let's see, t lambda t x e to the lambda t, that's right here. Well, that will cancel with this one. And then all of my e's will cancel throughout. So I have that canceling out. And so I have x plus lambda p is equal to a p on the right-hand side. So if I move, keep x on the left and I move this lambda p over to the right, I will have a p minus lambda p on the right. But if I factor out the p, I will have a minus lambda times the identity matrix, so make that of correct size, times the p vector. And so ultimately the equation is a minus lambda i matrix, which we know times the p vector is equal to the x vector. And so if I look at the things that I know, I know this, I know this, x. This p vector right here is what I don't know, but I have an equation that I can use to solve for the p vector. So if I go back to the original problem, I have to find p, we have a minus lambda i times the p vector, which is equal to, well, a minus lambda i, we found out to be 2, 1, negative 4, negative 2, so 2, 1, negative 4, negative 2, times p1 and p2, and that should be equal to x on the right-hand side, but what is my x? That was my eigenvector, so that's 1, negative 2. You'll notice again that the two rows, both on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, are multiples of each other, right? If I multiply this first row by negative 2, I will get negative 4. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, and 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. So there we go. All that fits together nicely. So they're telling me about the same direction in space, and that direction in space is 2 times p1 plus p2 is equal to 1. That comes from the first equation. And so, just like before, we'll play the same game. I'm going to let p1 equal, let's see, 1. Then that means that p2 is equal to 1 minus 2 times p1, which is equal to 1 minus 2 times 1, which is negative 1. And so, my generalized eigenvector p is equal to 1 in the first component, and then negative 1 in the second component. And that's fine. That is a totally legit choice for my generalized eigenvector. Now, you might remember that for our eigenvectors, we never really chose any of the coefficients or any of the variables to be 0. But here we can, and let's see why we can. Or I'll say, let p1 equal 0, and if that's the case, p2 is going to be equal to 1, and so my eigenvector, or my generalized eigenvector p, is equal to 0 and 1. And so this is also a generalized eigenvector. And so either is useful or correct, and we will use the second generalized eigenvector for our solution. We could have used either. Why would we use the second of the two? Well, I'm going to say y of t, you should be equal to c1, y1, plus c2, y2. But c1 multiplies y1. What did we find out our y1 to be? We found our eigenvector vector to be 1, negative 2, e to the negative 2t for our exponential, where negative 2 is our eigenvalue. And then I add to that c2 times, now what is our guess? Our guess is eigenvector, 1, negative 2, t e to the negative 2t, but then because of this vector form and I'm carrying around two bits, I have to have this little extra generalized vector bit. And with this generalized vector, I'm going to use the 0, 1 generalized eigenvector that we found that multiplies e to the negative 2t. So this guy right here is my generalized eigenvector. This is y1. This is my eigenvector. Again. And this piece right here, this is our y2, which is equal to t x e to the lambda t plus p e to the lambda t, accounting for that little extra bit of generalized eigenvector. Why would I choose that generalized eigenvector? The first one would have worked as well, the 1, negative 1 generalized eigenvector. Well, if we compare this to up above, we find out that this is the exact form is what we got from y double prime plus 4y prime plus 4y is equal to 0 once we converted that into a system where we track both the solution y of t, but that solution in vector form with the solution or with the velocity v of t. Okay. Key point. Given x prime is equal to matrix A times x, so I'm using the notation now that you'll commonly find in the homework, such that lambda is a repeated eigenvalue, the second 
linearly independent solution is given by um x of t is equal to t v vector e to the lambda t plus p vector e to the lambda t where p vector is found by a minus lambda times the identity matrix times the v vector our eigenvector is equal to or sorry excuse me times the p vector is equal to our eigenvector and so to be clear about notation here let's note that a times v is equal to lambda times v. So this is the typical notation we would use in class if we had bootstrapped this off of a simple harmonic oscillator problem. Or not a simple harmonic oscillator, but a critically damped oscillator problem. Or mass spring problem. Okay, so those are the key steps. If repeated, then second solution comes out because of this, or comes out as this guess, where this generalized eigenvector accounts for the extra bit that we would get because we're tracking two things at the same time and a product rule is being applied. And then that p-vector is found by solving again a linear system, much like you would for an eigenvector, only instead of being zero on the right-hand side, it's an eigenvector on the right-hand side. And that v-vector satisfies the eigenvalue eigenvector equation. All right, so now that we have this idea of a generalized eigenvector and we see how to find our second linearly independent solution, and we've seen why this should be the case, having bootstrapped off of our um, scalar problem, our original critically damped mass spring problem, we did come across this idea that we found two generalized eigenvectors, and I picked one, and I picked that one specifically because it matched up with the solution to the critically damped um, mass spring system, so long as I was tracking both position and momentum, or position and velocity at the same time. So let's just do this with an example. Let's say we'll go back to our original y of t, which was equal to c1, um, 1, negative 2, e to the negative 2t, plus c2, t, times 1, negative 2, e to the negative 2t, plus one of the first generalized eigenvector we found was 1 negative 1 that multiplies e to the negative 2t. That's not the one that we used because we wanted to correspond to the mass spring problem, but it was one that we found. We just discarded it and wanted to choose this other one for that correspondence. So if we look back at our original ODE, the initial condition said that at time 0, the first component should be 1, the displacement should be 1, and the velocity should be negative 1. That's the second component. So now if t is equal to 0, then I will have all of these t's back in the general solution being 0. And if all of those t's are 0, then what I'm going to get here is c1 times 1 negative 2 plus c2, and then an e to the 0, right? And then a c2 times t, but that t is a 0, so that first term in the second solution is gone. And now I have 1 negative 1, e to the negative 2 times 0, so I just have c2 times 1 negative 1. So if I write this as one vector, I'll c1 plus c2, and negative 2c1 minus c2, and I will get the linear system. 1 is equal to c1 plus c2. Negative 2, or sorry, negative 1 is equal to negative 2c1 minus c2. If I add these together, right, then I'm going to get that the c2s cancel, and I will get negative c1 is equal to 0, so c1 is 0, and if c1 is 0, then c2 is 1, and so the solution to my initial value problem is y of t is equal to, well, because of c1 being 0, this term is gone, okay, and then because c2 is equal to 1, that c2 will be 1, and so I get t1 negative 2 e to the negative 2t plus 1 negative 1 e to the negative 2t. That is my solution to the initial value problem. Okay, well, as another example, let me just borrow my previous solution. Let's erase these underlines here. And let's remember that y of 0, well, let's not quite use this because let's use the second generalized eigenvector which we found was 0, 1. And that was the one that we found that corresponded to our critically damped mass spring system. So at y of 0, I get 1 for the displacement, negative 1 for the velocity. I get c1 times 1, negative 2. But then I get e to the negative 2 times 0. But that's a 1. Then plus c2. And then in the second eigen solution, the t's are 0, so I only get the term 0, 1. And so what do I find out from this? I find out that c1 is equal to 1. And I also find out that negative 1 is equal to negative 2c1 plus c2. But if c1 is equal to 1, this is negative 2 plus c2. So c2 is negative 1 plus 2, so c2 looks like it should be 1. And so the solution I have for this is y of t is equal to c1, which is 1. So I get 1, negative 2, e to the negative 2t. But then c2 is also 1. So I get plus c2, t, or c2 is 1, t times 1, negative 2, e to the negative 2t, plus 0, 1, e to the negative 2t. So writing this as one vector, let's see what happens. I have this term. I have this term, but notice I have a zero on this. And so now if I add them together, I will have an e to the negative 2t. And then I will have a plus a t e to the negative 2t in my first row. In my second row, I have negative 2 e to the negative 2t. But then I also have a 1 e to the negative 2t here for a grand total of negative e to the negative 2t. And then the t term I have is a negative 2 t e to the negative 2t. Which now if I write out as a t times a vector, e to the negative 2t, plus another vector, e to the negative 2t. What goes in these vectors? Well... I have a 1 right here, a negative 2 right here, so I have a 1, negative 2. And then what else do I have? I have a 1 right here, a negative 1 right here, so I have a 1, negative 1. And if we go back and compare, see the solution with the other choice for generalized eigenvector, well, we will find that they're the same. So the implication is that it doesn't matter which generalized eigenvector we take.